Hi, I'm Kelly with CitruCycles.ca. This is The Culture, a step through e-bike made in Germany by Riesen Müller. I'm really excited about this bike as it takes advantage of R&M's control technology, which ensures a very safe and comfortable ride, while being a little less expensive than their popular homage. And it also has a very upright and comfortable riding position without negatively impacting the handling, which can sometimes happen with a very upright riding position. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the culture and its benefits. Then I'll go into the details. If you aren't interested in the details or you don't have the time, you can skip to the ride test at the end. If you have questions or want to check out the detailed specs or current pricing, you can head over to our website. There you'll also be able to order online with free shipping anywhere in Canada or set up an appointment to come try it here in beautiful Ladysmith on Vancouver Island. We can pick you up at the airport or ferry terminal if you want to come try it, but if you can't make it here, we have a try at home program and the details of that are on our website as well at citruscycles.ca. So before I delve into the details of the bike, let me give you some ideas of why I'm really excited about this. So as you can see, it is a step through, a true step through. You can actually step right over that. Uh, a lot of times the manufacturer will call it a step through, but really the test is, can you actually lift your leg that high and get it over there? And certainly it's not a problem. So it's really easy to get on and off. The other nice thing about a step through is you load up the rack here with a trunk bag and pannier bags and all sorts of stuff can get a little bit uh, harder to get on and off uh, when you've got to lift your leg that high. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. And e-bikes, of course, are a little bit heavier than a regular bike. And so leaning the bike and trying to get on and off over the rear uh, tire can be difficult. With the step through, super easy to get on and off. It's great if you're in start and stop traffic where you're stopping frequently, or you're just jumping on your bike to go get some groceries. Really easy to uh, get right on. I'm also excited because it offers a really upright riding position with a real elevated stem here you can see it's quite a elevated stem to get you uh, very upright and we've got uh, bars that are uh, slightly swept back here so again that contributes to being a very uh, upright ride you'll be able to go on longer rides uh, without worrying about the fatigue or soreness that can sometimes impact your upper body such as your wrists arms shoulders back and neck but at the same time unlike a lot of bikes that have you know these swept back bars in a really upright riding position I don't find that you're giving anything up. A lot of times you kind of give up safety and control of the bike for comfort and that doesn't happen with the culture. And R&M is kind of drawing on their uh, extensive uh, engineering experience, kind of the, the German engineering, uh, to uh, really achieve the ability to still have good control over the bike despite the upright riding position. So one of the ways is the use of their uh, control technology. That means you have an independent suspension uh, for both the front and the rear tire. So on the front we have a uh, suspension fork. On the back we have this rear swing arm here and a uh, shock and that uh, allows you to make sure that both of the wheels are always on the ground and that's going to give you uh, more control over the bike obviously, a lot more uh, stability, uh, safety, but it also gives you a smooth comfortable ride without jarring your back because this swing arm and that shock are absorbing all of those bumps and uh, vibrations and just really smoothing it out. But they've also designed the frame to be incredibly st strong and laterally stiff. Some step through bikes, maybe you've had a chance to ride some or read about them, uh, can be difficult to handle. They may not corner very well because they flex too much. That's kind of the, the reason why uh, sometimes there's a negative impression of a uh, step through. But if you look at how R&M designed the frame, you can see that isn't a problem at all with the culture. Look how uh, stiff here the rack is integrated in the frame, makes the bike really, really solid and you're not going to run into that problem. Uh, even if you look at the handlebars that they've chosen, they are swept back enough to give you comfort, but they don't come all the way back, making it hard to control and steer the bike. You've still got a fairly wide bars here, but they are swept back. So again, you have that really good control that you don't have to worry about on some of the uh, other step throughs. As well, we have ergonomic grips here, which again, enhance your uh, comfort. So the Culture is available in three sizes, and we have a guide on our website for choosing the right size. Obviously, you can stop by the store and try it out as well. 
Uh, you can choose from the GT Touring model, which comes with a traditional chain cassette derailleur for changing gears. Or what most of our customers do is they go for the GT Vario. This uses a Gates carbon belt, so there's no maintenance. You don't have to oil or clean the chain or drivetrain. And it uses the Enviolo powered by NuVinci continuously variable transmission. So that means you can shift while you're stopped. A little cyclist here, kind of on a hill right now. When I first start pedaling, I want it to be easier to pedal, so I make it look like we're going up a hill. It makes it easy to pedal. Uh, once we get going, my legs will be spinning too fast. Just twist that down. See, all I have to do is twist it, and now the hill becomes less steep, and it becomes harder to pedal. The bike isn't moving right now, but I can still shift that, which is incredible. On a regular bike, if you get the GT Touring version, you can't shift while you're stopped, only while the bike is moving. But with the uh, Enviolo CVT, we can go ahead and uh, adjust that while we're stopped, and also while we're pedaling. So for climbing a hill with a variable grade, I can simply adjust that to find the perfect uh, spot. And it is continuously variable, so an infinite number of settings between the highest and the lowest gear ratio. So we've got three sizes, two drivetrains, but one color. This is the Urban Silver Metallic. Now before I get into the details, I'll give you a quick overview of the rest of the features of the bike. So the Culture is using Bosch's most powerful drive unit. That's the Performance Line CX. It has this beautifully integrated Bosch Power 2 battery, so it has a standard Bosch Power 2 battery uh, in there integrated into the frame. You can remove it to charge it, or you can charge it on the bike as you wish. There's a charging port right up here, well sealed against the weather. Uh, you've got the uh, rear rack. You've got this really cool front rack as well. Uh, we've got lights built in to uh, keep you safe. The light's down here at the front of the rack, so it can't be blocked. You've got a light, of course, in the back, and it's running off of your main battery. We have powerful hydraulic disc brakes to uh, make stopping really easy. And we've got these wider puncture resistant uh, Schwalbe tires to help prevent flats and give you traction on slippery roads. You can get this really cool Abus folding lock. These are steel bars, nicely folded up, making it really easy to transport. There's a spot right there for it. And then of course you can just uh, unfold it and wrap it around the bike and whatever you're locking it to. Not only is it a great lock, but it also comes with an alarm. So if the bike gets bumped or somebody tries to steal it, you're going to get a, a beeping and then eventually a 100 decibel alarm. So that's uh, really cool as well. The key for the lock is the same key as for removing the battery. So you only need one key. All right, so that's a quick overview of the bike. If you wish, you can skip to the ride test. Or if you're interested in the differences between the culture and the homage, or you want the detailed specs, or uh, you want to uh, find out more about the uh, Bosch uh, mid-drive, how to remove the uh, battery, stick with me and I'll show all that to you. So the culture here on the left and the homage here on the right use the same frame. And at first I was a bit confused why Reason Muller would have two different bikes that use the same frame. Now, for the complete details on the differences between the two, you can visit our website at citruscycles.ca. But to uh, provide a quick summary, they're actually very different bikes, even though they use the same frame. So the Culture focuses on a very upright riding position and is designed for urban riding and light trails. So you can see the very elevated stem there, swept back uh, handlebars on the Culture, whereas the stem isn't as upright on the uh, Homage and uh, flatter bars there. The culture focuses on uh, urban riding and light trails, um, whereas the homage is uh, more sporty and is suitable really for any terrain. So in other words, the homage was designed with more off-road capable tires. Uh, we've got an air suspension like a mountain bike has, along with the dual battery option. So you can really ride anywhere you want all day long if you wish. With the homage, you don't get the front rack like you get on the Culture, but you can upgrade the bike to a roll-off transmission with electronic shifting. I've got one over here. Here we go. And knobbier tires. So this is the homage with the, uh, the GX roll-off. Roll-off electronic shifting and the knobbier tires, whereas the Vario has the Supermoto X, but those are all options that you can uh, do with the uh, homage. With the Culture, you get the uh, Bosch and Tuvia display, and if you wish, on the Homage, you can actually upgrade to the new Geox display. And if you check out my video review of the Homage, I go into the details of the Geox in that video. 
Uh, you get a much brighter light. It actually has a high beam that is over 1,200 lumens, which is uh, really, really bright. And uh, although both bikes, the Culture and the Homage, have the uh, light at the back, you'll notice that with the um, uh, homage, not only do you get a super bright light that's uh, visible from almost a kilometer, you can actually see them shining against the wall, when you pull any of the, either of the brake levers on the homage, it brightens the rear light as well. So all of those upgrades give you an idea that the homage was designed to handle more, whereas the culture is still a fantastic bike and it's ideal for riding on paved roads and light gravel trails. So now that I've explained the differences between the homage and the culture, let me get down to the details of the culture. So as I mentioned, we have a really very upright riding position and that's achieved with this uh, very high angle on the stem that's going to get you very upright. And we've got these bars with uh, what I think is really the, the perfect amount of uh, sweep coming back to again allow you to ride in a more upright position. What that's going to do is it's going to alleviate any upper body issues you might have, shoulders, neck, uh, back. Uh, wrists, elbows, you know, those kinds of things where when you're in a very forward riding position, you have a lot of your weight, you know, maybe distributed over your wrists and your hands and your shoulders. Uh, when you're very, very upright, like with the culture, then that isn't happening. And so that can really help alleviate a lot of those uh, upper body issues. Now I mentioned, I think they've done an ideal job with the amount of sweep on the handlebars here, because a lot of times when a handlebars are really swept back, you're kind of riding like this and that can make it more difficult to uh, handle and control the bike. So when you combine that with the uh, control technology, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, the bike becomes really easy to handle despite it being very, very upright and really comfortable. I do love these uh, Ergon GP1 grips. They're very, very comfortable, uh, ergonomically designed again to help alleviate strain. Um, you know, I, when I was doing the test ride, and I didn't mention it in the video, actually, it's interesting, the short bit of video I show you on the test ride is only a small portion. I tend to ride the bikes a lot to make sure I have a really good idea of the advantages and disadvantages and the character of the bike. And uh, one of the things I was in, in, interested in trying perhaps at some point is Ergon has some new grips, the GC1s, that were designed specifically for swept back bars. And the idea is that, now this isn't bad. You can see the angle of my, my I don't have a huge bend. Uh, if you can imagine that the bars came back quite a bit more and you have this bend in your hands like this and that becomes really uncomfortable. So the GC1s are designed to kind of get your hands a little bit, uh, your wrists a little bit bent out. But actually, I'm quite happy with these, but it would be interesting to try the GC1s. But because these aren't really, really swept back, I'm not finding a lot of strain on my wrist, which is really important. The Culture, along with the Homage, D-Lite, and Low bikes use R&M's popular control technology. This consists of a front suspension fork, in this case a Suntour XCR32, and a suspension fork of course gives you more comfort, less fatigue, and more control over uneven surfaces. Of course, suspension forks are pretty common on e-bikes. What makes this bike unique is that the rear wheel is on an independent swing arm here with a uh, X-Fusion glide shock kind of tucked away in there. You can kind of see it in there. There it is. That's the uh, rear shock. Uh, so this is usually only seen on mountain bikes. And you may think, well, look, I'm not mountain biking, so I don't understand why you'd want to have a rear shock. Well, it's part of r &M's control technology. So just as that front suspension is giving you more comfort and less fatigue, uh, the rear suspension does those, but it also adds the benefit of giving you more control. And this is because both of your wheels now are always on the ground so that you are safe and secure riding your bike. When I'm riding in the r &M with the control technology, I find myself feeling more confident and I tend to travel a little bit more quickly. I definitely notice that on uneven terrain, roads with potholes, broken pavement, trails, things like that. But you even notice it around corners. Basically, your two wheels are glued to the ground. You just feel more secure. The bike tracks and handles a lot better. If you think about it, you know, driving your car, if you didn't have independent suspension on the wheels, it would make it a lot more difficult. So this isn't necessarily for someone that's, uh, I mean, a mountain biker, this is for anyone that wants to feel more confident when they're riding because it's going to give you more control, more safety, and more comfort. And of course, comfort is important. It's going to help absorb a lot of those bumps. So when you go over a bump, 
rather than you being bumped up and down by the tire, that uh, shock is going to absorb it and is really going to help you kind of remain steady all the way along, even though you're going over bumpy terrain. And of course, that helps reduce fatigue because you're not going up and down the whole time. You're very, very smooth and the bike is absorbing a lot of that. But it's also a really important safety thing because then you're going to be able to handle difficult surface conditions such as broken pavement or railway ties, gravel and, and potholes. And the fun thing about getting an e-bike is now you can go the safest or the most interesting or the quietest way rather than the shortest way. Because we've got the assistance from the motor, we're not concerned about really maximizing, uh, you know, the efficiency in going the shortest way possible. I'll often look at, okay, hey, look at that road back there. There's no cars on it. It's nice and quiet, but yeah, it's a secondary road and it's in rough shape. With a bike like this, it doesn't really matter because you're still in control. And so what that means is when you are riding and there's obstacles in the way, uh, potholes or things like that, rather than, you know, kind of slowing down and speeding up or swerving all over the place, you can just keep going. And that's going to make you safer in traffic because you are going to be more predictable. If you can keep a consistent speed and a consistent uh, uh, heading, uh, then that, it's going to make you more predictable and safer. So yeah, comfort is important as well because when you have a bike that you love, because it feels safe, because it's comfortable, because you feel confident riding it, then you are going to ride it more. You're going to take it on longer rides and you're going to use it more often. The Culture is available with two different drivetrains. The Culture Touring uses a traditional chain, comes with a Shimano Dior derailleur and an 11 to 42 tooth 10 speed cassette. Of course, you'll want to keep your drivetrain clean, lubricated and adjusted and avoid uh, bashing the derailleur. And of course, you do need to downshift before you stop because you can't shift while you're pedaling. So if you want something that is easier to use, an intuitive drivetrain that does allow you to shift while stopped and doesn't require any maintenance, then the Culture Vario is the way to go. And that's what I've got here. So it features the Enviolo continuously variable hub. It's the hub back here. And the Gates carbon belt instead of a chain. So previously known as the NuVinci N380, uh, with this uh, continuously variable transmission, you can shift while you're stopped or while you're pedaling. While stopped, you can access around 60% of the range uh, available for shifting while you're stopped. And uh, of course, while you're pedaling, you can access the uh, whole range. It is continuously variable. There's no specific gears. So it's infinitely a variable between the high and the low, which is great for hills with a variable grade. It's very intuitive. So you can see there's a little cyclist here and uh, heading up a bit of a hill. And if I wanted to make it easier to pedal because I've got a bigger hill or I'm just starting out and I want it to be easier to pedal, I just twist this and you see as I twist it, the cyclist goes up a steeper hill. So now it's much, much easier to pedal. Now, of course, if I start like this on flat, my legs will be spinning too quickly because it's too easy to pedal. And all I do is twist that and bring it down and see the cyclist is getting onto something that's a little bit flatter. So that makes it harder to pedal. So super intuitive. You know exactly what to do. Make it easier to pedal. Look like you're going up a hill. Make it harder to pedal. Make it flat. On a variable hill, I love this because if the grade is changing, I can just tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit easier to pedal. Don't need it that easy make it a little bit harder to pedal and you simply can adjust that. It's infinitely variable between the highest and the lowest gear ratio. And perhaps I didn't make a big enough deal of the fact that you can shift while you're stopped. In other words, when you have a, a bike with uh, you know traditional trigger shifters and a chain, you can't shift it while you are stopped. So you kind of have to think ahead and go, oh, okay, I may be stopping up ahead, so I'm going to downshift to an easier gear so that when I get started, it's easier to pedal. And perhaps you've had that where you've had to stop suddenly. The worst is, you know, you're climbing a hill, you're uh, going along quite well, and then you have to stop suddenly. Maybe somebody cut in front of you or the light changed. And now you can't get going because you're in the hard, you know, a harder gear and you need to be an easier gear. With the uh, Enviolo hub here, we can, as we're stopped, simply go like that. Ah, good. Now it's easier to get started. And I can go ahead and start on that hill or at that stop sign or at the stoplight or wherever I am. So I really love that convenience of being able to shift while you're stopped. It means that I'm not constantly shifting, constantly anticipating, thinking, oh, okay, I may stop, got a yield sign here, that sort of thing. I can just go ahead and shift when I need to after I've stopped. 
I love having a Gates carbon belt. It doesn't need to be cleaned and oiled like a chain, and it lasts much longer than a chain. Living here on Vancouver Island, we get a lot of rain in the winter, and the roads can get really mucky and dirty, and I love being able to go for a ride and coming back and not have to worry about cleaning or lubricating my drivetrain. I also have to uh, love not worrying whether or not my chain is going to rust. Now, this is a great example of uh, R&M's engineering that uh, they're really well known for. So they've managed to design this uh, full suspension bike uh, that still uses a belt because um, when uh, the suspension flexes, you go over a bump or something like that, that could change the uh, belt length. And so they've uh, gone ahead and used uh, this pivot point here that helps keep the tension on the chain consistent uh, throughout the travel of the suspension. And it's really just a, a very clever uh, way of designing that. The other really interesting thing about this is uh, replacing the belt is very easy. They've designed the frame here so that uh, the belt is kind of uh, running in between the chain stays here. Uh, so that you're in between the, the rear triangle here so that you basically uh, uh, Open up the quick releases here loosen off the bolt drop the wheel and you can replace the belt and put it on now Of course belts generally don't need to be replaced uh, very often at all And uh, you'll actually be able to tell when it's uh, starting to wear and needs to be replaced But it's clever because a lot of bikes uh, they actually end up putting a brake in the frame because they don't design the frame To allow for the easy removal of the belt so you often end up having to you know loosen a couple of bolts and and take a piece of the frame out so you can pass the belt back and forth. And you don't have to do that with the, uh, with the uh, culture here because they have designed the frame to accommodate the belt uh, right from the beginning and you know really very well thought out. I also like the fact that we've got this uh, really clever uh, belt guard here so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, you know changing your clothes to ride this bike. Uh, you're not gonna get your pant leg uh, caught in the uh, uh, belt there. It's really uh, very clean and uh, uh, just really well thought out and that's one of the nice things about a, a bike made in Germany by R&M is their engineering is uh, uh, Very sophisticated and they really give a lot of thought to designing the bike So the culture comes with uh, built-in lights. They're running off of your main battery, which is great You don't have to worry about keeping them charged up. This is the uh, Lumotech IQ XS uh, mounted on the front here. Uh, again, quite clever attention to detail because the light is uh, mounted below the rack. So if you put stuff on the rack here, it's not going to block your light. Of course, as you turn, the uh, light turns as well. Uh, you can actually adjust the angle here, which is really handy. And I really like having a side cutout here so that when you're driving at night, if you're going by an intersection, uh, you're going to be quite visible because of that side cutout in the light and also these uh, reflective sidewalls in the uh, tires as well. And uh, we have a rear light here as well. And again, little things like, uh, you know, we've got a reflector and two LEDs and the wiring is actually run through the frame here. So it's not exposed. You don't have to worry about it getting caught on anything. Uh, it's uh, again, just a, a nice attention to details. So the built-in lights are great for keeping you safe. And these uh, Magura MT4 hydraulic disc brakes are also going to help keep you safe. With the hydraulic brakes, we aren't relying on the strength of your hands to stop the bike. You're actually relying on the uh, hydraulic fluid, kind of like in your vehicle. So it means that with a heavier bike like this going down a steep hill at higher speeds, you're going to be able to safely bring the bike to a complete stop simply by squeezing lightly on both of the brake levers. And there's no uh, reason to favor your rear brake over the front brake. You can squeeze them both equally and you'll find that you have a lot of stopping power that way. With the uh, hydraulic brakes, uh, not only does it mean that they stop really well but uh, there's uh, less maintenance because they are self-adjusting so you don't have to worry about the cable stretching or breaking uh, rusting and you know making it difficult to stop with that high the hydraulic brakes the uh, pads are gonna self adjust so as the pads wear they're gonna uh, adjust closer to the rotor so that you always have a consistent stopping power for safety, we also have these fantastic Schwalbe Marathon all-motion tires. They are specifically designed for e-bikes to accommodate, you know, again, the higher weight, higher speeds. You're going to be riding more frequently on an e-bike, and so they're a sturdier tire. They have a very high degree of puncture resistance, and they're a bit of a faster tire. We've got a, a fairly slick tread here, so they're a bit of a faster compared to, say, the Supermoto X that... Uh, R&M puts on the homage. There's the uh, Supermoto X. Um, but of course, um, 
these are actually the uh, culture is using the same rims as the homage and the same fenders uh, full length uh, fenders here and so if you did want to change say to the supermoto x or even the rock razors which is a knobbier tire of course you can make those changes but with the um, all motion you are getting a very fast tire with a really high degree of puncture resistance uh, but they don't have quite the same uh, off-road grip as say the uh, supermoto x now, speaking of fenders, these are the SKS. Uh, they are a plastic fender, but very, very stiff. They don't flop around. We've got a couple uh, stays here at the front uh, with some adjustments, and it's attached to the bridge. In the back as well, we've got a number of attachment points here that really help keep them very stable. Uh, so I haven't had any problems with them um, you know, being noisy or uh, moving around at all while you're riding. They're uh, very effective at keeping you dry even when you're riding through muddy conditions. Yeah, one of the neat things about the uh, culture, say, compared to the homage, is we do get this uh, front rack. Now, the front rack, uh, some people love it uh, because, you know, you can put some light things up there. There is a maximum load uh, capacity of three kilos. Uh, you don't want to put anything too heavy because then when you turn, the rack does move with the uh, handlebars. So that is a good thing for a lot of people in that uh, it's quite intuitive. And when you're riding with a front rack, if the rack doesn't move. It takes a little bit of getting used to because as you turn, the rack doesn't move and it can be uh, a little bit confusing for your brain. Uh, but of course, the disadvantage of a rack that moves is if you put a heavy load up here as you turn, that load can move and can uh, negatively impact on the uh, handling of the bike. So that's why you know we've got a lower uh, load uh, specification of three kilos. Of course, if you don't like the front rack, you can remove it. That's uh, something easily that you can do or we could do for you and uh, you can relocate the light back to the uh, mounting point there but to help you know make sure that things aren't uh, flying around uh, we do have a bungee cord here it's actually quite clever underneath there you can see there's some adjustability so you can uh, easily um, uh, adjust that to put uh, something that's bigger in there and we've got the rails around the edge here as well but do keep in mind it's a uh, maximum uh, three kilos is the uh, uh, rating on that. Now, of course, for a lot heavier things, you have this fantastic rack at the back. It's actually integrated into the frame. You can see it's part of the frame connecting to the seat post here and connecting to the frame down here. That means that this rack uh, is actually fully suspended. It's part of the uh, suspension system. So when you have, uh, you know, eggs <laughs> on the rack here and you're going uh, through a lot of bumps, the wheel is going to move uh, and absorb those bumps, but your rack, just like you, is going to stay steady the whole way through. So it's really clever. Uh, it's quite a feat of engineering, really, to be able to have a rack with a full suspension. Because if you look, you know, at full suspension mountain bikes, none of them have racks. It's, it's not really possible to add one anywhere because what happens is if you, you know, connect your rack to the bottom of the rear triangle here and it goes up and down, uh, your rack's going to break because it's uh, connected, you know, uh, to a fixed point uh, and then a moving point doesn't work. So they've connected this to two fixed points uh, and it's uh, fully suspended. So it's really quite clever. They even have these uh, blocker rails here so you can clip on the bottom of your uh, bag if you wish and it keeps the bags from hitting the spokes as you ride. So I really like the uh, way they've designed the rack. It's a really slick look. I think this is one of those bikes that looks better in person than the pictures. Sometimes people look at the pictures and go, oh, you know, not really sure. And then they come and look at it. It's like, wow, it is actually really nice. And so these clean lines on it here. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, this uh, rear rack has a maximum load limit of uh, 20 kilos. I'm surprised it's so low when you look at how it's really, you know, integrated into part of the frame. Um, and it is a rack time compatible. So you can see there's actually uh, little holes in there. And so you can slide on rack time accessories. Uh, for example, uh, with the Tinker, we can get this uh, really cool rack time uh, compatible tray that has a quick release here. And you just slide that onto the rack. So lots of cool things you can do with the rack. And of course, uh, to keep things on, instead of a spring-loaded uh, rat rattle trap, as sometimes they're called, which can kind of vibrate and rattle and eventually loosens up, uh, R&M's gone with this uh, bungee cord. So this is really great because it's uh, you can adjust the size, just like the front bungee, and uh, clamp things down onto there. And it's going to be completely silent. You're not going to hear that rattling around, which is a nice feature with the rack. 
Oh, and I should mention, this is quite clever. The front rack here, as I mentioned, you know, it does move when you steer, which uh, is nice from a riding perspective. Um, but uh, a lot of times if you put a, a front rack on a bike and you put it on the kickstand, and we do have this fantastic uh, integrated kickstand here, very, very sturdy. The bolts, as you can see, are uh, mounted into the frame. So the frame is designed specifically to accommodate the kickstand, which is great. You're not gonna have to worry about it coming loose and, and you know, your bike tipping over, very solid. Um, but the other cool thing is, uh, like I was saying, with, when you have the right rack and you have uh, your bike on the kickstand, what can happen is your front wheel can, you know, turn all the way around and uh, you end up damaging the frame and all of your stuff falls out and the bike tips over. What's really cool is R&M uses this um, uh, block lock uh, headset here and so that actually prevents your handlebars from turning all the way around so basically it gets to a certain point there we go and it won't turn anymore so the rack here isn't going to come in contact with the frame and crash and you know cause the bike to fall over and stuff to fall out of the rack that block lock is actually quite clever it's on all their bikes actually um, but it's especially clever when you have a front rack like this the Culture also comes with the Avis Bordeaux Folding Alarm Lock, which is really quite clever. It's mounted on the bike here, so, uh, you know, bike locks are an interesting uh, challenge a lot of times because the more secure a lock is, the heavier it is and the more difficult it is to bring along and the less likely you'll actually bring it and use it. So I think this is a great kind of middle ground between something that's very uh, secure, but also it's always with you. You don't have to remember to bring it along. You're not having to put it in your bags and you forget to bring your bag or it's just mounted there permanently on the bike, which is fantastic. The other really clever thing is the key is the same key that you use for uh, removing the battery. So you only have one key for the bike. And so you just flip up the little uh, uh, latch there and you can take that off. And so it's a folding lock, so that means you can see it, it, it folds up nice and small for mounting on the bike, and then it unfolds. And unlike a U-lock, you know, U-locks are great, and this is also uh, steel bars, just like a U-lock, so it has uh, quite a bit of the strength of a U-lock. But of course, U-locks are not only difficult to bring along, like where are you going to put it on the bike, um, but it's also hard to wrap around the frame. So what I like about this is that, uh, you know, it's pretty, uh, I can, it's folding, right? So it's easy for me to um, wrap it around the bike. Uh, maybe around the rack, around the seat tube here, and then wrap it around whatever I happen to be locking it to, whether it be a bike rack or a post or anything like that. So uh, that's uh, really uh, very convenient. And uh, it also has an alarm built in. So let me grab the key and show you how that alarm works. Okay, so I've got the key here, a nice, uh, cool leather uh, Reason Muller keychain. Comes with your bike. And uh, so basically I just... Uh, Put the key in the side here and turn it and that allows me to unlock it and it's quite clever. The uh, bars actually pull out from the opposite side from the key, which is kind of an anti-pick uh, kind of uh, idea. So open that up and you can see, just put it on the ground here, it'll be a little bit easier to hold the camera and the lock. So you can see that opens up. There's actually two indentations in here because there's two positions. When I'm riding the bike, obviously I don't want the lock uh, the alarm activated. So in the first position, the lock is still secured. If I turn the key and remove it, it's locked. I can't open it up. Um, I can fold it. I can put it back on the bike and it's not going to make a sound. So that's really uh, handy. Um, but if I do want to activate the alarm, then I just uh, put the key in, uh, turn it. And now I push this in one more time this to the second position. There we go. And now it's uh, armed and activated. So um, it, you may, uh, I'm gonna make the alarm go off. There we go, it, it beeped to tell me that it's uh, there. I'm gonna bump it and it's gonna kind of beep a couple times and then it's gonna go off really, really loudly. So, you know, if you're listening on headphones, you may wanna turn the volume down. So I'm gonna, you know, move it a little bit and you can see how it's beeping and saying, hey, you know, I'm a, an alarm and uh, I'm armed and so, you know, uh, so that's really handy if somebody just accidentally, you know, bumps your bike, uh, something like that. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, better leave that alone. Then if it gets continuously moved, there you go. Now you can see the very, the very uh, loud alarm. To deactivate it, I put the key in and turn the key and disarm it by pulling that out. And now it's disarmed. 
Uh, Avis is quite clever, so it's a motion detector alarm, obviously, and uh, the alarm's going to go off for a little while, and then it's going to stop to preserve battery life, and then it'll go on again, and then it'll stop, and so forth. So that can be very effective, and it could also be completely ineffective. <laughs> and by that I mean, um, you know, here in Ladysmith, if I go to, say, the bakery, the butcher shop, or something like that, or the swimming pool, and I lock this outside and I put the alarm on, and the alarm goes off, probably somebody, if I don't hear it myself, you know, somebody's going to be coming by and say, hey, you know, that's, that's Kelly's bike, you should leave it alone. Uh, you know, but in other places, if you're not near it, and there's no responsible party near it, it's just going to be annoying to other people. So you may, in fact, choose not to activate it. But it's nice having that option. It adds a little bit to the uh, size of the alarm and a little bit to the weight. But it's included with the bike, which is awesome. And if you are, you know, at a going out for a ride and you stop at a cafe or restaurant where it's going to be nearby and you're going to hear the alarm, then there's some assurance, you know, knowing that if somebody starts messing with your bike, you're going to hear it and you can go and respond to that. So I do like having the uh, Avis uh, Bordeaux uh, folding alarm lock. So I think I've covered almost everything else except for the Bosch drive unit and the battery, which we're going to get to in a moment. Uh, we've got the uh, Sele Royale looking moderate saddle here. Uh, it's really interesting. This is a gel saddle. It's actually quite comfortable. In fact, People that come and try the R&Ms and if they decide, you know, to buy a different bike, they often ask me to put this saddle on whatever bike that it is that they buy. So it's a, actually a quite a comfortable, not too wide, not too narrow, not too cushy. It's just kind of, you know, that perfect combination. But of course, you could easily change that to something else if you wanted to. The other thing that uh, you may want to change are these pedals. Uh, you know, again, for bike manufacturers, it's a little bit tough to figure out what kind of pedals to put on because everybody has their own personal preferences. Some people might want to go clipless. Uh, you know, there's lots of different options. And so they put these, you know, th there's nothing wrong with the quality of the pedals. They're quite good. They've got this rubber here uh, to protect you. But, you know, for myself, I find them uh, a little bit on the small side. And I like having pins because I ride in the rain and I don't want my feet sliding off. Um, so, you know, they're okay pedals, but uh, something to consider at some point, perhaps uh, replacing them. We do have the uh, FSA uh, crank arms here. That's a standard uh, length on the Bosch. And uh, you can see all the wiring and everything is kind of integrated into the frame and uh, just a really nice looking uh, bike, very well engineered. So let me walk you through all of the uh, Bosch features of the bike. Okay, so Bosch has a number of different drive units available. This is the Performance Line CX and that is Bosch's most powerful, highest torque motor. And a lot of times people ask me about the wattage of the motor, but really what's more important is the torque. Torque is what gets you up the hills because of course all these bikes you know can assist you up to 32 kilometers an hour here in Canada that's the, the legal uh, cutoff point you can go as fast as you want but once you exceed 32 kilometers the motor is going to kind of ease off and stop providing the assistance and so it doesn't really matter what wattage is is on a flat section any motor is going to get you up to that speed without any problems what you care about is the hills right that's when you really want to make sure you've got enough power to get up the steepest of the hills and that's where the performance line CX is really useful because it has 75 newton meters of torque. So not only does the CX drive give you lots of torque, um, but it's also very, very responsive. So going back to that hill example, if you stopped in the middle of the hill and wanted to get started again, with the CX drive, it's actually calculating your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, your cadence, that is how quickly your uh, legs are spinning, and the speed of the bike, there's a speed sensor back here, a thousand times per second. So that means soon as you put pressure on the pedals, it senses that, and if you move it up to the highest level of assistance, put some pressure on the pedals, you're gonna get the assistance right away and you're gonna climb right up the steepest hill, even from a standstill. And part of that is because of the torque and the responsivity of the bike. It's super natural. It just feels like you're riding a regular bike, but you're stronger than you were yesterday. Uh, but the other thing that is going to help you up those hills is because it's a mid-drive, you're leveraging your transmission. So when you change to an easier gear ratio on the NuVinci Hub here, or if you get the touring version with a cassette and you kind of choose your higher, your climbing gear, your, your big climbing gear, that impacts directly on the motor because the motor is turning the belt or chain if you go with the touring edition and that is turning the transmission and so soon as you change to an easier gear ratio that impacts directly on the motor and helps you just climb up really any very steep hill 
Mid-drive is also beneficial because when it's driving the chain of the motor, it feels more natural. It feels just like a, a, a regular bike. It, the weight is also better distributed. Sometimes you see the motor in the, in the rear hub, and so now you've got the extra weight back there. And again, when you change gears, it doesn't have an impact. Um, but with this, we've got the motor in the middle here and uh, lots of benefits to that. I love having the Bosch system. There are other uh, mid-drive uh, uh, motors on the market, obviously. Uh, Bosch does a great job of being very responsive, um, lots of power. But the other thing to think about with Bosch is, uh, you know, they have a couple service centers in Canada. Most bike shops have had their training and have access to parts and service. Bosch is really very, very reliable and they have this multi-year parts commitment. So they really look at it and say, hey, this is a bike. This is this is transportation for a lot of people. You know, for myself, that's how I get around, right? So my bikes have to be reliable. They have to always be working. And if there's an issue, I need to be able to get a part for it like that day or the next day so that I can get back on it. And that's kind of what you can expect from Bosch. They've done a really good job of making sure that uh, it's easy to service and that you can get parts and things like that. The other thing that Bosch has done a really good job of is their batteries. So you can see we've got the Bosch power tube battery integrated into the frame here. I'm going to show you how it removes. I really like the way uh, r and handled this. So some of their bikes, uh, the Nevo, for example, they have the battery uh, kind of removes from the bottom here of the down tube. So it makes it look really slick, right? I mean, that's a beautiful looking bike, um, but it's, a, it's slightly, and it's not a big deal, but it's slightly more inconvenient getting the battery out of the bottom compared to the top here on the uh, culture. Very easy to get to. But I like the fact what they've done is they've done this kind of uh, rubberized cover for it. And same on the uh, Nevo, and especially on the Nevo, it makes sense here because you're not gonna get stone chips. Uh, a lot of other manufacturers are doing aluminum covers and we're starting to find with some of them that those covers kind of slip because the grooves aren't deep enough for the screws to really hold it in and then it gets really hard to line it up and this is this is really ideal. I really like it and uh, you know again protects your frame. So basically you can see I can pull this back a little bit and access the battery here. I'm going to show you how that removes. Before I do that though I should just mention this is a standard Bosch power tube battery. Okay? It's not something that r and said, hey, let's design our own battery so that it integrates nicely into the frame. Bosch won't allow manufacturer to do that. The reason for that is Bosch, again, they really wanna make sure that many, many years from now, you can get a replacement battery. And the only way they can ensure that is if they make the battery themselves and they make the battery the same for all the bikes. So they've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of bikes using the standard battery. And so that allows them to inventory that. And they've even done some cool things like making them backwards compatible. So as they've moved up to higher capacity batteries, they've generally made them backwards compatible with previous generations. And so that you could, you know, buy, uh, if you bought a Bosch bike four years ago, you can still walk into the store, buy a uh, compatible battery that's higher capacity and put it on and right away. So I really like that about Bosch. Uh, whereas other manufacturers will allow, uh, you know, the bike manufacturer to make their own battery. And now you kind of have to ask yourself, well, hey, if they change that battery every year, think of how many batteries, different styles, and how long are they going to keep inventory of those batteries? And so Bosch really has you covered there. So let me grab the key and show you how easy it is to remove the battery. You don't have to remove the battery. You can charge it on the bike. So there's this uh, charging flap here. And again, really cool the way the Bosch does this. Um, I have to pull a little bit hard because there's actually a little um, uh, tab here that fits right into the uh, charging socket to help secure it when you're riding so that this isn't you know, gonna flap around or allow water to uh, get in there. Um, and so uh, I, I like the way they've done that. It's also uh, permanently attached to the bike, so it's not gonna fall off. You're not gonna lose it when you're charging. So yeah, you can charge it while it's on the bike like that, uh, or you could remove it and bring it inside and charge it. And let me show you how to do that. Okay, so we've got the uh, Abus. This is an Abus Plus uh, lock, so very secure. You can see it's uh, quite the complicated key. The, the cool thing is uh, when you buy your bike, we give you the key number. And so if you ever lose all of your keys, you can order the replacement keys on the Abus website. And of course, this is the same key that we used for that uh, folding lock. So I'm gonna put the key in and I turn it and uh, that is going to release the battery to the first position. I can't pull it out, it's not gonna fall on the ground. It's especially useful on a bike like the Nevo where the battery comes out the bottom. And now all I have to do is press on the uh, release button here, and now I can pull that battery all the way out. And uh, you can see I can then charge it 
inside if I want. There's the charging port. It's identical to the charging port that was on there, so you don't need any sort of dongle or anything like that. And uh, we do have LEDs on here to show you the charge status while it's off the bike. So just press the button. You can see there's the button there. Press that. And uh, there we go. It lights up to show you that this is fully charged. Now, this is interesting and a bit of a departure from uh, in the past. To put the battery back in, I do have to turn the key in order for it to latch in. Now it's latched in the first position and I simply give it a push and now it's uh, completely secure. So keep in mind, you do need the key to put the battery back in. I'm not sure why they've done that. I don't love it because uh, I guess I'm used to not needing the battery uh, to put the, uh, uh, sorry, I'm not used to having to have the key to put the battery back in, uh, but I suppose it's not a big deal. With the culture, uh, RM has elected to use Bosch's Intuvia display. Bosch has three different displays uh, right now. They have the very compact, small Purion display on the side, the Intuvia, and the brand new Kiox display. And so if you go with the homage, uh, that's uh, one of the upgrade options is you can go with this Kiox. It's a uh, uh, magnetically mounted, uh, full color, uh, Gorilla Glass, uh, Bluetooth enabled, lots of cool features. A little bit of a different remote over here. Uh, check out my video review of the Image uh, if you want to see more details of that. Uh, but I really do like the uh, Intuvia display as well. Uh, it is removable like the Kiox. So we just press the button there and it slides off. There's these little rails here. It's still, you can use it while it's off the bike. You can actually charge a USB device with the uh, display. So if you want to charge up your phone, it'll charge off of the main battery, which is really cool. And uh, one of the th things that uh, you can only do with the Intuvia display is you could put a Kobe on here. That's spelled C-O-B-I. I have a video review of that on our website. And that actually allows you to replace this display with your phone. So you can actually use the buttons over here to control your phone and the phone to control the bike. And there's navigation and fitness and all sorts of things like that. So there is some uh, advantages to the uh, Intuvia display here. Uh, as you can see, very easy to read. We've got our battery level up here, the current speed and some trip information down here. Right now we're looking at the clock. And uh, if I take the display off, I can still cycle through that information by pressing the I button. But while you're riding, you don't want to be pressing the I button over here. Instead, you just press it over here and it'll cycle through information such as the maximum speed, average speed, trip time, range. This is really cool. And by the way, I've got a reflective uh, film on it right now, so it's a little bit harder to read. Uh, but it is backlit, uh, which is also quite clever. So the range right now we're off, so hey, we can go as far as we want. I press the plus button, you can see it's saying, look, based on the last few kilometers that you rode, if you keep riding on Eco, you could probably get about another 73 kilometers. And that's usually, you know, fairly accurate. Move it up to tour and it's saying, yeah, now we've got about uh, 45. Um, the battery isn't fully charged. On this bike, realistically, I'd expect that to be more about 60. Uh, on Sport or EMTB, it's lower, and on Turbo, obviously, it's even less. So the range calculator is quite useful. You can use that, there's the odometer, and you can use that in conjunction with your trip distance to know, okay, this is how far I've gone so far, uh, so that's probably how far it is to home, and uh, this is how much further I can go. So yeah, I can you know use a higher level of assistance, or maybe I'm going to use a lower level so I get more battery life. So that's really uh, very useful. You can see that my lights are on and that can be controlled with the lights button right here. Uh, the cool thing is uh, Bosch recently did an update. So if your lights are on, you turn the bike off. Uh, when you turn the light bike back on, your lights are gonna come back on as well. So you don't have to worry about turning them on and off. And in fact, if you remove the display, the bike turns off and the uh, lights would uh, turn off then as well. Put it back on, bike turns itself on and we should get the uh, lights back on. There we go. Uh, so this is showing you your current level of assistance. And while I'm riding, you'll see in the ride test video, there's a graph that lights up here to show you how much assistance the bike is providing. Over here, there's an up and a down arrow. The Bosch system is unique of uh, most of the mid-drive systems in that it does have shift detection. So when you shift, it actually backs off on the power to uh, the motor, to the drivetrain. That's not only going to make the shifts a little bit smoother and easier, but it's also going to prolong the lifespan of your drivetrain. So it's pretty clever. In conjunction with that, it has shift recommendations. So if it feels like, hey, you know, it would be a little bit more efficient for you, more comfortable for you, more efficient for the motor and battery life, if you were to shift up or shift down, it's going to actually recommend that to you. 
Now, if you find that annoying, you can turn it off. Pressing and holding the reset and the I button actually brings you into the uh, programming menu. This is a common question I get from uh, people, especially around uh, in the fall and the spring, when uh, daylight savings time kicks in or off. Um, this is where you change your, your clock. You can use the plus or minus buttons to adjust the time or the light button and the power key. It does the same as the plus and the minus. Pressing the I cycles through the uh, rest of the information. Changing your wheel circumference won't really do anything other than change the uh, speed display slightly. Uh, you can change your language. You can change your units from metric to imperial. I'm going to change the time format from 24 hours to 12 hours. I can turn the shift recommendations on or off. Then I've got a bunch of informational uh, data, such as my power on uh, hours, the uh, version numbers of the drive unit, of the display, the uh, drive unit serial number, the uh, part number, the battery version, the serial number of that, and that sort of thing. Press and hold the I and the reset to exit the programming mode. Uh, oh, I should also mention that we have walk mode enabled. Uh, and so that means uh, if maybe you're in a pedestrian area uh, where they don't want you riding your bike, you're getting off the ferry, they don't want you going on the ramp or, you know, any situation where you just want to walk the bike. Uh, this is especially useful if you've got, you know, stuff loaded up on the front or the rear rack there. Uh, instead of you pushing the bike yourself, uh, there's a button way up there. It says walk on it. It's probably upside down. Let me switch that. There we go. Uh, it says walk on it, and that uh, initiates the uh, walk mode. So when I press that, uh, nothing happens. Uh, well, that's because the assistance was off. And so now let me put it on eco. There we go. Press that. Uh, well, still nothing happens other than the display says walk assist plus. That's your visual cue and reminder that now, for safety reasons, after I activate walk mode, I press and hold the plus button, and there we go. And now the bike moves away for me at a walking pace. Now, that's a, you know, four or five kilometers an hour. Uh, the pedals are going to turn, so let me do that again. There you go. So you want to stand, uh, you know, a bit to the side that uh, you can uh, control the bike, but aren't gonna, going to get hit by the pedals. Bosch recently uh, updated this, and especially it's noticeable on the CX drive where we've got that extra torque. Um, it actually, it's quite clever. If you're going up a steep hill, it's actually going to give you more power uh, to keep you at that four or five kilometer an hour. Whereas if you were on flat, it doesn't need to give you as much power. So that's a, a nice improvement. And that again is one of the neat things about the Bosch system is, you know, usually once or twice a year, they have some updates and come into the store, we'll hook up your bike to the computer and uh, we'll update it for you. And you get to take advantage of, you know, the latest uh, technology that uh, Bosch has come out with. So I really do enjoy the ride experience of the Bosch. I enjoy the uh, maintenance aspect and reliability of it. And, uh, you know, it's really quite a clever, well thought out system. So now that I've gone through all the details of the culture, I'm going to take you on a ride test. And the ride test is especially going to highlight the main attractions of this e-bike. It offers a very upright riding position without compromising safety. So if you're interested in a bike for urban riding and light trails that is enjoyable and safe to ride, come try the culture. If I've missed anything or if you have any questions, you want to order online, check out the current pricing, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. There you can reach out to us with your questions or set up an appointment to come try it for yourself. You can find out all the details on the website at citruscycles.ca. So I wasn't sure how much I would enjoy uh, riding the culture. My wife has an homage, which is a similar frame, and I really like riding it. But I wasn't sure because with the much more upright riding position and the really swept back bars, you know, I, I often find that with the swept back bars, I kind of feel like I've lost control over the bike. But I'm actually, you know, I'll, I'll get to some more challenging terrain soon, but so far I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm sound surprised, but I guess that I am. I, I shouldn't be because uh, when R&M designs a bike, you know, they're going to take all those accounts, all those things into account and make sure that it does what it needs to do and that it's safe and that it's comfortable. And certainly this is super, super comfortable. It reminds me a bit of those kind of Dutch bikes, you know, where you're really very upright you've got a great view of everything around you super super comfortable and yet because of that control technology we're still we don't have any of those downsides that sometimes we've seen in the past with uh, those kind of dutch style bikes maybe where you're hitting your toe or 
finding controls that it's hard or in corners that it's hard to stay in control of the bike and uh, I'm not having any of those issues obviously not hitting my toes and still really very comfortable got a bit of a hill here it's great that it's got the Bosch CX drive it's Bosch's most uh, powerful motor with tons of torque so no problem flying up those hills Actually, this is really fun. I'm quite enjoying myself. It just feels uh, really, really relaxed. Like really comfortable, like, oh, this is just a great bike for just getting on and riding around. I'm probably not gonna try to go super, super fast on it. I certainly could if I wanted to. I and mean, I'll head down the hill here. It's geared, at a, you know, wide enough gear ratio. Doing a little over 40 there, no problem. Uh, with uh, my cadence being too high or anything like that, I can pedal quite comfortably. Getting into some broken pavement here, potholes, um, some gravel up ahead. And this is where that control technology from RM really shines. You're riding through this and you're just kind of floating over everything. So I'm still in control, I'm not having to swerve, not having to speed up and slow down. Those are things that can make you unsafe in traffic. So if I was riding in a lot of traffic, it's nice to know that I can just kind of keep going straight, ride through whatever is in the way, and uh, still stay in control of the bike and, and comfortable. And that way I'm more predictable to cars. Yeah, so if your ride involves a lot of uh, rough stuff like this, this is awesome because it's gonna help reduce upper body fatigue, keep you more in control of the bike, it's great, I love it actually. Uh, it just, it's funny because it's very different than the homage, even though it's the same frame. They've just set things up differently and what a difference that can make. Uh, while I'm with some of the wet, kind of slippery, loose gravel here, do some swerving, finding I'm able to control the bike, no problem like that. Slam on the brakes here, no problem with the brakes. These tires are doing a really good job, actually, in this kind of loose material, so it's not a, not a problem. Uh, I'm impressed with the tires. I'm impressed with the, with the handling of the bike overall and the brakes, obviously. Uh, normally, there's a little trail I would take to the left there, but we just had a major windstorm here in Ladysmith, Vancouver Island. We were uh, out without power for two or three days, and they're just kind of slowly getting cleaned up. And it's nice uh, having a bike where you know, you know, if something unexpected happens, you're going to be able to control the bike, you're going to be able to stop, you're going to be able to swerve and avoid things. And that's important. Like I said, sometimes with an upright bike like this, they tend to be flexy, tend to be harder to control. And, you know, that's, yes, you can get used to it. I had a customer tell me, oh yeah, you know, I kind of got used to how I had to control my bike to stay safe. but in those kind of emergency situations or unexpected situations uh, you can't really do that so it's nice having a bike that's going to handle all of that let's put it up to uh turbo for the hill here just for fun i could leave it on the emtb and it'll automatically adjust for me let's see if the gps is going to work to give you a uh, idea of the gradient this one isn't too bad no problems climbing right up and I love having that uh, Inviolo uh, variable hub here because I can just easily dial that in depending on the hill as the gradient changes again you know you're probably not going mountain biking with this bike but you know you may have rides that involve gates and things like that and it's nice knowing that a bike like this will handle that really well. Also love having the built-in light here. Nice and bright for the tunnels.
nice with the full suspension just being able to hop off curbs like that. I haven't actually, uh, you know, normally on a bike like this, you'd probably want to stand on the pedals when you're hopping the curbs to uh, save yourself some of that impact, but with the uh, control technology, the rear suspension, uh, you could remain seated and it's just fine. So this is a fairly steep hill. I'm maintaining about a 10 kilometer an hour pace without having to work too at it too hard. I'm in my easiest gear ratio. Now that I'm getting towards the top here, it's getting a little less steep. I don't need to be in my easiest gear ratio. And if I wanted to, I could work a little bit harder to get some more speed up. Now here's a great example of where the Bosch CX mid-drive is really useful. So a lot of times people will want to throttle on a bike because they think that they can get started without one. But I'm, I'm on a slope here, and with that CX drive, as soon as I put torque on the pedals, just I just have to push down a little bit, push some weight on them, immediately the system starts. So there's no delay like you may experience with a hub motor, with a cadence sensor, even a torque sensor, sometimes the hub motors don't respond right away. With the Bosch CX here, you're getting that response immediately. So no throttle is required. And it's nice not having one. Basically, you're just kind of riding a bike. You're just really strong. So I can do a speed wobble test here. Uh, don't do this at home. Keep your hands on the handlebars all the time. <laughs> but just for fun, I'm uh, taking my hands off the handlebars. I don't I can't imagine that R&M would make a bike with a speed wobble, but I just want to test it for you to be sure. So yeah, no problems at all. Uh, by speed wobble, I mean a lot of times in a step through frame, the frame isn't rigid enough. And so when you get going a certain speed, if you take your hands off the handlebars, the whole front end starts vibrating. And we've seen that on a few bikes. That's not a big deal because, you know, ideally you want to keep your hands on the handlebars and then it's just fine. Uh, but it's nice knowing with a bike, like this, it's stiff enough, you're not gonna have any of those problems. And even, you know, I can do a lot of kind of crazy maneuvers here and uh, the bike's tracking just fine. I'm not having any concerns about it at all. As you can see, there's a fair bit of debris from that storm. These wider tires uh, let me ride right over any of the sticks and stuff on the road, so that's nice. I don't feel that these uh, Schwalbe all motion really introduce a lot of extra rolling resistance even though they're a wider balloon tire. They certainly are very comfortable. I'm really enjoying that sensation of kind of having this air cushion both from the tires and from the suspension. It's nice because it, uh, it just makes it really accessible. It makes a bike you want to ride even if you're just going for a short distance. Or, you know, if you're going on a long ride, it's uh, nice because you're not going to end up being fatigued from uh, all the bumps in the road. You're just going to be able to keep on riding. Another example of when I love that uh, Enviolo system there is you don't have to shift uh, when you, uh, before you stop, you can just go ahead and shift after you stop. Okay, so I'm pedaling up to uh, 50, no problem, 55, now my legs are spinning a little bit quicker, so you know, kind of after the 55 and 60, uh, the gearing really doesn't allow you to pedal too much, 55 is no problem. And at the other end, as you saw going up that really steep hill, there was enough uh, of an easy gear to make it up. Basically, this bike's going to handle everything that you need. That's important. A lot of times on a step through, they'll put a really low gear ratio. You know, maybe they'll do an internally geared hub with eight speeds or five less. And, uh, you know, if you live somewhere moderately flat with moderate hills, it's fine. But around here, you know, especially west coast we, we have a lot of hills 
a lot of steep hills. So it's nice having that little bit of extra that just helps you to climb up anything. Kind of debating on this bike uh, whether or not I would keep the EMTV mode, which is kind of handy because you can kind of just set it and forget it. Or if I wouldn't mind having the sport, since there are times maybe that I don't want really turbo for the hills, uh, but I'd like a little bit more than tour, and I don't want to use the EMTV, so something I might do for this bike is change it to uh, sport from the EMTV. But certainly climbing the hills is no problem. Front basket hasn't bothered me at all. It does move when you turn, which does make it easier to get used to. If you've ridden a bike with a front basket where the basket doesn't turn, it can take a little bit of getting used to. Obviously, the downside of that is it's a lower load capacity, about three kilos. And, uh, you know, it's nice that they've included these little uh, um, bungees here to hold your load down. Because, of course, as you turn, the load's going to move with the bike. Well, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I'm really enjoying the riding position here. great for visibility and traffic you're visible you can see around you you know it's super comfortable if you've got back issues you know shoulder neck issues this is really a great bike to consider because you're not going to be leaning over at all you're very upright and then that uh, independent suspension on the rear the control technology it's really going to help isolate a lot of that uh, the bumps and the vibrations it can really cause a lot of upper body fatigue and tiredness. All right, through some puddles here, kind of swerving again. Tires, no problem. I'm always on the ground because of the control technology. Uh, quite grippy and wet conditions. Fenders doing a great job keeping the uh, water off of me. Yeah, you know, I could really see having this bike. You have this bike, you're just going to start riding it. Like it just, because it's easy, right? You don't have to put special clothes on or whatever. You don't have to, you just you just get on and you ride it. And it's easy. The uh, NVLO system is so easy. You've got the assistance from the motor to help you up on the hills. You're very comfortable. You know, it's just, uh, if you're looking for a good way to kind of get out more, get more exercise, this is a great bike because you are still working at it. You're still pedaling. You can choose, you know, I can turn it off. So there we go. It's off. Rides just like a regular bike. Gonna go a little bit slower, of course. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit heavier than a regular bike, but it's rolling along just fine. The NuVinci system, of course, it's a mechanical system, so I don't need battery uh, to operate it. Turn the systems back on to Eco. And even Eco is nice, just gives you a little bit of boost. You've got tremendous range with it. And I could see, you know, somebody starting out with this bike and using it, just kind of getting around, getting to work, doing grocery shopping and just falling in love with it and using it for everything and starting to do, you know, longer rides and touring. And certainly with that comfort, it's going to support longer rides. All right. Well, it's hard to believe it's time to end the ride because I am really enjoying it. It's a fantastic bike. If you have uh, questions about it, you want to come try it yourself, or you'd like us, us to uh, ship one to with free shipping in uh, Canada, you can head over to our website at citrusycles.ca.